What is up everybody, my name is Justin French, Come news for those who care, welcome to a new episode of Ranked in Peace. For those new viewers out there, this is pretty much my ranking series where I rank a band or artist's worst or weakest record to their best. If you would like to see more content of that, definitely leave this channel a subscribe if you're also into album reviews and track reaction reviews. Now, for this one, this is coming just in time for their new album which is coming out this Friday called When Legends Rise. Now, for those of you who haven't gotten the wink, wink, nudge, and point, I'm actually doing this video on Godsmack. Now, Godsmack are a band that do have some good singles under their belt, but I've never really been the biggest fan of their albums whenever they come as a whole. But I did get a chance to listen to these albums in full, and I'm going to give you my thoughts on them. So anyways, let's go ahead and get started with my number six pick. Coming in as my number 6 pick, I unfortunately have to pick out the Oracle out of the band's discography. One of the reasons why is because I feel like the sound here on this record just feels a bit more generic and doesn't really bring anything new to the table here. Another reason why is because I've never really been the biggest fan of the singles here. Crying Like a Bitch, I know that's one of the band's bigger songs, but it just feels very, very cringy in my opinion. And I've never really been the biggest fan of Love, Hate, Sex, Pain. Actually, there's only two songs that I really enjoy off this record, which is another reason why I'm not too big on it. There's only two songs I come back to here on this record, and those are Devil Swing and Good Day to Die. That's pretty much about it. So, anyways, let's go ahead and move on to my number five pick. My number five pick happens to be, how convenient, four. And while I do think that this record really does have a very strong first half with tracks like Livin' and Sin, Speak, which was a really nice single for them, and also Shinedown having some really, really nice riffs, the main reason I did have to put this at number 5 is just because I feel like this is a very forgettable record. I don't really hear very many people talking about 4 very much. And heck, there's even a sequel to Voodoo here on this record, Voodoo 2 to be exact. But that's pretty much my reason why I had to put it at number 5, so let's go ahead and go on to number 4. Coming in as my number 4 pick, I ended up picking the band's sophomore record, Awake. This album came after the success of the band's self-titled debut record, which was released back in 1998. This album came out in 2000 and actually happens to be the only album that I own physically from Godsmack for anyone that saw my CD collection back in the day. <laughs> but yeah, this album does have some really nice and heavier moments here on this record. I love tracks like The Opening, Sick of Life, and then you have other songs on here like Going Down, Mistakes, Trippin', Vampires. Vampires was nominated for a Grammy back in 2001. Now the main problem for why it's a little bit lower here on the list is because that I just feel like the singles I really got tired of after a while. Don't get me wrong, Awake and Greed are pretty good singles from Godsmack, but I just got tired of them after a while. But that's my number four, let's move on to number three. Coming in as my number three pick, I ended up picking the band's 2014 record, A Thousand Horsepower. Now, I remember whenever this record had come out, and I had kind of previewed the singles before I had listened to the full record, and I was 15 at the time. I was still in Texas visiting my grandparents, because me and my brother would usually do that over the summers. And I remember the morning whenever I listened to this record, and my first initial reaction to this record was, meh. But I did listen to this record in preparation for this list, and I have to say, this has to be some of the catchiest material that Godsmack has under their belt. From the energetic title track, A Thousand Horsepower, to the hypnotic and mesmerizing, almost Middle Eastern sounding ending of Turning to Stone, I think this album is really going to grip the listeners due to its hooks and instrumentation. I really love going back to other tracks here on this record like FML, Something Different, What's Next, Generation Day, and I Don't Belong. I think it's really big on its hooks and instrumentations here on this record. So let's go ahead and dive into number two. Coming in as my number two pick, I ended up picking the band's first number one on the Billboard 200, and that happened to be Faceless back in 2003. And man, was this one a fun one to listen to in the car. There's not one moment here on this record that I did not bop my head to. 
Although I did kind of find the awakening interlude to be a bit weird leading into Serenity, but still pretty good material and there are tracks on here such as straight out of line i stand alone which is the first godsmack song i ever heard make me wonder and dead and broken just kind of make me feel like a biker with my hair kind of flowing out of the wind motorcycle revving on the road you know metaphorically it's just a really fun album to listen to but anyways now that we have those five out of the way what's going to be number one so that only leaves my number one album, which happens to be the only one I haven't talked about yet, which happens to be the self-titled debut record from Godsmack, released back in 1998. Funny, I was born in 1998. This record came before I was even born, so it's kind of older than I am. <laughs> but yeah, this record is just as fun as Faceless was. The only difference here is... This record just feels a bit more heavier, it feels a bit more darker, it feels a bit more raw in its sound, and I really do enjoy that. I think the singles do a nice job of kind of capturing that sound too, with whatever having some really funky guitar lines in it, and I really love the instrumentation on that track, along with Bad Religion. Keep Away is a pretty nice hard rock tune, and Voodoo, well... That one's interesting, <laughs> to say the least. But the main track I really do enjoy off of this record is Moon Baby, the opening track to this record, because it really represented Godsmack for what's not only to be expected from this record, but onward with their career. Well, maybe until When Legends Rise come out, but we'll cover that whenever that record comes out. But anyways, y'all, these are my thoughts on the Godsmack discography. Where would you rank these albums? Definitely comment in the comment section down below. And no, this is just my opinion. But anyways, y'all, thank you so much for watching and hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you all for watching this video. As always, thanks to Infinity on Hannah for these awesome designs. If you want to subscribe to my channel, you can click right over there to catch up on more content on this channel. If you want to see a previous video that I did, you can click right over there to see that video. And if you want to follow any of my social media links, they are linked down at the bottom. So thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed and hope to see you soon.